just a little bit before starting my presentation. It will be based on the models of procurement of losses. First, we'll look at uh, how Europe deals with this kind of uh, problem. We, in the morning, saw that Austria has a model that is the TSO that is responsible for the procurement of losses. This is not the only model that is uh, possible, so we will look at alternatives, and Portugal shows a different uh, way, so we'll see in the end. But just before that, regarding the incentive to reduce losses, it's not based off this presentation. In Portugal, that were referred, um, just a small clarification. Our, our model is based, until last year, on a linear relationship between the losses, effective losses, and the reference value. In Portugal, we set a, ve a reference value for losses. With, uh, there is a proposal from the network operators, and then we choose the value. And then we see what was the effective losses. If they are, are higher than the reference, then the TSO is entitled to a penalty. If it's lower, he's entitled to uh, the benefit, to a reward. The difference that was introduced <coughs> last year was due to um, the uncertainty with the penetration of renewables. We were not sure how were the losses going to evaluate. Uh, looking to the growth of the penetration of renewables. So we accepted the proposal from our DSO to set a neutral band and a uh, round of the reference value. And this is the major difference. So this is the first year <coughs> that uh, we have this neutral band and we are going to see what is going to happen. Procurement of losses. <coughs> So first, we'll see what uh, the problem is, how the European legislations deal with it, possible solutions in European countries, and then the model that we have applied in Portugal. Uh, fortunately, Directive 72 is very clear. It sets principles for network operators to deal with this problem. Whatever the solution is, must be transparent, non-discriminatory, and market-based. This is the principles that we must guarantee that happens. And there is a fourth statement that uh, makes the difference whenever <coughs> they have this function, which means that if you want, we cannot look for other solutions than network operators. <coughs> so the first one is the most <coughs> common one. Network operators are responsible for the procurement. And we can see that from the answer that uh, they can be power exchanges, bilaterally, or EU and other mechanisms, auctions or tenders. Uh, whatever the solution is, we can see that regulators cover the costs, validate the costs, and then they put on the tariffs. So losses is looks at uh, any other <laughs> imbalance in the system. This option is uh, assumed in uh, most countries in Europe. From the 23 answers, 1920 was based on this uh, solution. Another solution is the supplier is responsible. So in this one, losses are injected by suppliers. Each supplier goes to the market and buys the energy that uh, it is <coughs> that he assumes that uh, it should be <coughs> consumed by his uh, uh, portfolio. Losses are treated at any imbalance, so uh, and uh, it's acquired on the, <coughs> the market. Sorry. Uh, can I have the motor? Thank you. Yes. So this uh, solution was adopted in Ireland, Portugal, and Spain. This is the picture from the answers that we received. Three major groups. 
this one. Oh, sorry. We can see that uh, this is the standard solution. Network operators are responsible. This is the countries that adopted this model. And this is the, the, how they managed to look for the energy. They go to the market or bilaterally to auctions or tenders. In these groups there is two solutions, which means that for these countries these are paid by network tariffs, they are included in network tariffs, and on these countries there is a dedicated tariff to paying the losses. For this solution here, there is no tariff, so the energy is injected by suppliers and there is no tariffs for losses. Portugal. So, this is the picture, possible ones, the tariffs, physical injections, or exchange pools. In Portugal, we have physical injections, so for each programming hour, the suppliers must uh, inject on the system the energy for losses related to his portfolio. It stands here. So, there is a specific treatment for losses or generated dedicated groups. Power losses is considered as any other imbalance on the system. So, we have two, sorry, we have two, two, uh, two problems. The first one is to deal with energy. So, we, in the electrical system, we lead by the hour, as you know. The hour is programming the injection, and then there is a consumption, and this the night may be in balances and settlement here. So, for every programming hour, this is an example for a <coughs> low voltage client. The energy that uh, this client will consume shall be this one, but the supplier must go to the market and buy the, the, the energy with losses related to losses in low voltage, medium voltage, high voltage, and very high voltage. This is transmission network. Uh, this is the basic rule for every voltage level, the losses must be acquired by the supplier. For a very high client, so he just adapts, he just buy the losses for his level of, for the network where it's connected. So this is by the hour, so for every hour, the energy that is uh, injected to cover losses is depends on the network profiles, losses, that are approved by us, the regulator, and is published. So, for every hour of the coming year, we published in our website the hourly profiles that must be acquired and, and used. This is a table, this is an American one, but uh, this is the the for this year, October, this is our day, this is the values, the hour losses that must be used by the suppliers when going to the market to buy their energy. For, low, for voltage level, depending where these clients are connected. So the, we are on the 6th of October, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Today, they are uh, acquiring an energy according to these profiles. Yesterday was a holiday in Portugal, so you can see it was a different pattern, like weekends. So low voltage, medium, high, and extra high. So this is for energy, but uh, which means there is no tariffs for losses. Does it mean that uh, agents don't pay the use of networks in Portugal? No, because when it comes to tariffs, what you use is, <coughs> what you have in place is, uh, which is applied by the tariff regulation, sorry, was this uh, loss adjustment factors, which is applied for billing purposes. They are separated for network type, 
they are separated for the time period of the day, peak, partial peak, valley and super valley, and this is used to terrification purposes. So these loss adjustment factors applied, it's, let's say, for a building period, monthly or whatever, it is completely equivalent to these ones that are applied on an hourly basis. So this is the what we have in Portugal. The problem of losses is not in the end of TSOs or the SOs. They are on the end of suppliers. They must acquire the energy for losses according to these rules. This one was just put here to compare our situation with 2009. This is on the treatment of flood on the document published at the time. And at the time being, we were considered as a a strange, a different, very different of the models. So this was supposed to be just to compare what we were in France, Sweden and Norway, in Austria at that time, that might be compared with the evolution today. And uh, that's it. Now if you have any doubts, I'm glad to answer, if my nerves allowed it. <laughs> but uh, we think this is the best way, it's simple to understand and we release the TSOs from the burden of taking risks and have to predict uh, losses and whatever. Because we understand that no one better than suppliers know their consumption and know where to buy the energy better than them. This is not the role of the TSOs, predict consumption and buy energy at lower prices than suppliers. So this is what they do. Thank you.